Today is July 14th, 2024. Bastille Day if you're in France. Welcome to the Weekend Update. My name is Nicodemus and this is the Disruptive Technologies Podcast. Today we have a packed episode filled with significant developments in the world of technology, politics, and finance. From a shocking event that has influenced political markets to the latest moves by major tech companies, we'll explore how these disruptions are shaping our future. So buckle up because it's going to be a time. Former U.S. President Donald Trump's chances of winning the White House surged to a record high after he was injured in an assassination attempt at a Pennsylvania rally, which I didn't have on my 2024 bingo card. Traders on Polymarket noted the spike. A Secret Service spokesperson confirmed that Trump was safe, that the suspect had been killed, and that a spectator was as well. Two others were critically injured. Photos of Trump with blood on his face have circulated widely. They show him defiant and pumping his fist. Poly Market's Yes shares predicting that Trump will win climbed 10 cents to 70 cents after the incident. This suggests a 70% chance of Trump winning in November. Poly Market's smart contracts handle the bets in USDC. And as Poly Market's name might suggest, this all happens on the Polygon blockchain. Meme tokens linked to Trump also surged. MAGA rose 34% to $8.38, and Trump increased 67%. Meanwhile, Bowden, linked to Biden, fell about 15% to $0.03. Cents. While these tokens act like a betting market on the election, they don't pay out based on election results. Noah Cuman, writing for the Mars Review of Books, noted the incident led to new meme coins on Solana's pump.fun. Some examples include Resurrection of Trump and Hero Trump. Crypto Pump 2. Bitcoin increased 3.6%. Trump has shown strong support for crypto and will speak at a Bitcoin conference in Nashville. The Republican platform aims to stop the Biden administration's crackdown on the industry. Polymarket has seen high trading volumes in 2024 due to political betting interest. The U.S. presidential contract has $252 million in bets. That's a record for the company and crypto prediction markets. Predicted is a fiat-based betting site. It also saw Trump shares rising from $0.59 cents to $0.66 cents after the shooting, before stabilizing at $0.65. Cents. The U.S. Securities Exchange Commission has dropped its three-year investigation into Hero Systems. Hero is the developer of Bitcoin Stack's Layer 2 blockchain. They raised $70 million from token sales between 2017 and 2019. The company was previously known as Blockstack, and they treated the STX token like a security since its launch in 2018. The SEC confirmed in a July 12th regulatory filing that it does not intend to recommend enforcement action against Hero. Hero has been filing with the SEC under Regulation A Plus since 2019, which is for smaller security issuances. They also raise funds under Regulation D and S exemptions for private and international offerings. In 2021, Hero argued that the Stacks blockchain had become decentralized enough that it no longer qualified as a securities issuer. The company stated that it was no longer necessary to treat Stacks tokens as securities since they no longer provide essential managerial services to the Stacks blockchain. This is the second crypto investigation that the SEC has dropped this week. On July 11th, Paxos announced that the SEC would not take enforcement action regarding its Binance USD stablecoin. However, the SEC is still pursuing cases against Ripple, Binance, Kraken, and Coinbase. Recent court rulings, including a Supreme Court decision in June, have limited the SEC's enforcement abilities. The Supreme Court overruled the Chevron Doctrine, which gave regulators broad latitude in enforcing laws. The SEC also faced setbacks in cases against Ripple and Binance in 2023 and 2024 when judges ruled against claims of securities laws violations. Issuers of spot Ether exchange traded funds expect final approval from regulators soon. This approval from the U.S. SEC could come as early as this week. The ETFs might start listing as soon as next week. Vanek and 21 shares are among several issuers that filed amended registrations this week. They hope to receive the SEC's final sign-off to list their spot Ether ETFs. There are eight issuers in total awaiting regulatory approval. Analysts believe that these ETH ETFs could attract billions of dollars in inflows in the months following their launch and that could significantly boost Ether's spot price. Crypto analyst Tom Dunleavy suggests that ETH's lower availability on exchanges could lead to more responsive price changes from ETF buying demand compared to Bitcoin. Crypto native hedge funds are a significant source of this demand. These funds, which have self-custody billions in spot Ether, are now looking to swap their holdings for ETF shares through institutional market makers like Virtue Financial. The source noted that over a dozen crypto native funds, each managing more than $1 billion in assets, have shown interest in the exchange. Once listed, the spot Ether ETFs will join other publicly traded crypto funds. This includes around a dozen spot Bitcoin ETFs that began trading in January. Currently, ETFs hold over $50 billion worth of Bitcoin. Dunleavy predicts that Ether ETFs could see up to $10 billion in inflows in the coming months. Spot Solana ETFs might also enter the market soon. At least two Solana ETFs could start trading early next year. 
Here in the US, a recent court ruling in Illinois classified Bitcoin and Ether as commodities. That was the CFTC versus Ikerti case. We talked about it the other day. Judge Mary Rowland's decision has prompted crypto industry leaders in Nigeria to urge the Nigerian SEC to adopt a similar approach. As cryptocurrencies become more significant globally, there's a push for clarity in Nigeria's regulatory framework. Lucky Uwakui is the chairman of the Blockchain Industry Coordinating Committee of Nigeria. He emphasized the importance of defining crypto assets. He believes clear guidelines will help creators, and he's not the only one. The Nigerian SEC needs to define crypto assets and explain to the public how they qualify as securities or commodities. Owakwe noted that while the Commodity Futures Trading Commission views Bitcoin and Ether as commodities, the difference between proof-of-stake and proof-of-work protocols might change this classification. However, Nigeria's Commodity Board has traditionally focused on physical commodities like cash crops and agricultural products. They've shown little interest in digital commodities. The Chief Marketing Officer at Flimcap highlighted the varied interest from multiple Nigerian governmental bodies. He suggested that the SEC should focus on cryptocurrencies as fundraising tools, such as initial coin offerings. Room Ofi is an analyst that argues that each cryptocurrency is unique and should be individually scrutinized to determine if it's a security or a commodity. As Nigeria works on a comprehensive regulatory framework for digital assets, classifying Bitcoin and Ether as commodities could bring clarity and stability. Meanwhile, Nigerian youths are being encouraged to engage with blockchain technology to enhance their ability to compete on a global level. The co-founder of ICP Hub Sahara stressed the importance of embracing blockchain technology. At the DECA hack event at the University of Ibadan, he highlighted the potential negative impact on Nigeria's future if it fails to adopt blockchain technology. Internet Computer is a public blockchain where developers can create decentralized applications and NFTs. The DECA hack event brought together innovators, experts, and blockchain enthusiasts from across Africa. It's intended to foster discussions and networking to advance technological development. Uchina Agams is the Web3 ambassador for Arbitrum. He spoke about bridging the gap between blockchain and decentralized applications. He emphasized the importance of front-end development skills in making blockchain technology accessible. The top five startups at the competition will receive up to $25,000 in grants. They'll also advance to Nigeria's National Grand Finale Blockchain Hackathon Conference. All finalists will get advisory support, mentorship, and access to ICP grant applications. Encouraging the Nigerian youth to engage with blockchain technology is intended to position them for success in the global digital economy. This approach is expected to boost technological innovation, contribute to nation building, and keep Nigeria competitive in the evolving tech landscape. The German government has sold the last of its Bitcoin. On July 12th, they offloaded 3,846 tokens. This final transaction followed weeks of selling. The government sold tens of thousands of Bitcoin in several tranches over the past three weeks. Most of the 50,000 Bitcoin sold by Germany came from an asset seizure. This selling kept the market below 60,000. Although Germany has finished selling, the market may remain suppressed. The $9 billion Mt. Gox reimbursement plan is a significant factor. This plan could keep the price of Bitcoin low in the coming weeks. The Mt. Gox exchange collapsed in 2014 when Bitcoin was still only worth hundreds of dollars, not tens of thousands. Tony Sycamore is an analyst at IG Markets. He believes that the Mt. Gox payments will not have a disastrous effect. He thinks that the market's already priced in the reimbursement. There are many factors at play, and it's hard to predict creditor behavior. Sycamore believes that half the reimbursement supply could hit exchanges this July. He said investors have known about the plan for a long time, so it's not a surprise. And even so, it's my feeling that it's just a drop in the bucket. Even if they sold all $9 billion at once, it wouldn't have that big an effect. We're talking about a $1.1, almost $1.2 trillion market cap. $9 billion is almost nothing by way of comparison. Now, despite the selling pressure, institutional investors bought the dip. Data from CoinShares showed that U.S. ETFs saw $295 million in inflows for the week of July 8th. This reversed several weeks of low inflows into the funds. So the German government's Bitcoin sale added significant selling pressure. The Mt. Gox reimbursement plan might continue this trend. However, institutional investors are buying the dip, showing confidence in Bitcoin's future. The European Union has confirmed that it will continue collaborating with Chromaway on blockchain-based sustainability solutions. This was announced on July 12th after Chromaway's presentation at the EU Pre-Commercial Procurement Final Review Meeting. They showcased advancements in decentralized applications for digital product passports and intellectual property rights. Chromaway's development of relational blockchain technology was on display at the meeting in Brussels. This technology enhances efficiency by improving the organization and complexity of on-chain data. It blends the flexibility of relational databases with the decentralized security of blockchain. Relational blockchain can power enterprise solutions and underpins Chromia. Chromia is a public layer one platform for decentralized applications. 
It's set to launch its mainnet on July 16th. Orr Perlman is Chromio's co-founder. He expressed his enthusiasm for developing institutional applications with the EU. The EU's positive assessment of Chromaway demonstrates the potential of relational blockchain to impact both public and private sectors. This aligns with the EU's strategy to integrate innovative blockchain solutions, promoting sustainability and efficiency. The EU is committed to technological advancements that drive economic and environmental benefits. In July 2024, representatives from RBN, Echo, and Chromaway will be interviewed by the European Blockchain Association. The purpose is to assess compatibility with upcoming EU initiatives. The team will also participate in a follow-up workshop in Brussels this September to outline next steps for late 2024 and 2025. The EU has also partnered with other blockchain solutions. IOTA was chosen for its Web3 ID for Blockchain Sandbox in 2024. The UK Law Commission believes DAOs do not need separate legal oversight and should fit within existing financial and tax regulations. They said there was no general consensus on DAO characteristics. The Commission notes that a single law for DAOs just isn't feasible due to their diverse nature and the way they adapt to local laws. The spectrum of DAOs, from pure to hybrid arrangements, complicates their legal characterization. The Law Commission has agreed with the government to review trust law for more flexible structures, but not specifically for DAOs. They also recommend reviewing the Companies Act of 2006 for better oversight of DAOs as limited liability partnerships and examining reforms for nonprofit DAOs and current AML regulations. They call for international cooperation for a global AML and tax framework for DAOs. Meanwhile, the Solicitor's Regulation Authority warned of a Bitcoin scam involving fake lawyers using personal data and Bitcoin payments. The SRA advised verifying suspicious correspondence through reliable means. After a landslide Labor Party victory, PM Keir Starmer appointed Talib Sadiq as Economic Secretary to the Treasury and City Minister, making her responsible for digital asset regulation. Sadiq has called for a comprehensive framework to address crypto risks, contrasting the conservatives' approach. Labor expects to attract fintech companies while implementing stricter crypto regulations. Despite Labour's priorities on housing and the NHS, Sadiq's role suggests significant changes for the UK's crypto policy. The Labour government's stance on digital assets remains to be seen, as PM Starmer's first act was to scrap the Conservatives' asylum seeker policy. OpenAI is working on a new AI model called Strawberry. This model is expected to help AI tools reach human-level intelligence through advanced reasoning. Strawberry will autonomously scan the internet and perform deep research. This will allow it to solve complex real-world problems. These problems could range from scientific discoveries to software development. OpenAI's goal is for AI to understand the world more like humans do. Continuous research into AI capabilities is common for the industry. The practice is expected to improve AI systems over time. Strawberry will achieve its goal by conducting post-training analysis. This will help create more human-like responses. In January 2024, OpenAI CEO Sam Altman said progress would focus on reasoning ability. Strawberry is still under development, and it's unclear when it will be available to the public. The details of how Strawberry works are kept secret within OpenAI. And speaking of keeping secrets, whistleblowers filed a complaint with the SEC against OpenAI. Now, they're alleging that OpenAI used illegal NDAs to prevent employees from discussing safety concerns. Documents sent to the Washington Post suggest these NDAs were meant to stop former employees from speaking with federal agents. Senator Chuck Grassley supported the whistleblowers. He said OpenAI's policies hinder whistleblower rights. He called for changes to OpenAI's NDAs. The SEC received a letter addressed to Chair Gary Gensler. It urged swift action to enforce rules related to whistleblower laws. The letter also referenced Biden's executive order on AI safety. This order lacks legal teeth, but shows the administration's stance on AI. OpenAI responded by saying its whistleblower policy protects employee rights. They claim to have made changes to remove non-disparagement terms. OpenAI currently faces several lawsuits over its use of copyrighted materials for training ChatGPT. Despite this, it continues to form partnerships and continues to make progress on Strawberry. Amazon is boosting the memory capacity across its services to improve the accuracy of its Gen AI systems. This upgrade is intended to tackle AI hallucinations, which is a major issue in AI technology. These hallucinations occur when AI generates false or nonsensical information which makes it a significant concern for enterprises relying on accurate data. Amazon's update targets a 75% reduction in these hallucinations. The core of this enhancement is the increased memory for Amazon's Gen AI agents. This allows the AI to better understand and manage complex tasks, providing more personalized and seamless experiences. This memory upgrade is crucial in minimizing errors and improving reliability. Global data predicts the Gen AI sector will grow from $1.8 billion in 2022 to $33 billion in 2027. Addressing AI accuracy now is critical to supporting this growth. 
Amazon's update includes its AWS Bedrock service and the Amazon Q chatbot. Ensuring that AI responses are accurate and relevant is a significant step towards more reliable AI outputs. By focusing on reducing hallucinations and improving accuracy, Amazon is addressing a major barrier to the widespread adoption of AI. SoftBank has acquired Graphcore for $600 million, Graphcore being a leading British AI chipmaker. It will now be a wholly owned subsidiary of SoftBank. And this isn't SoftBank's first venture into the UK tech sector. In 2016, it acquired British chip designer Arm. Despite the $600 million deal, Graphcore's total funding was around $700 million. Graphcore will continue to operate under its own name with headquarters in Bristol, UK, and offices in Cambridge, London, Gdansk, and Sinshu. Nigel Toon is the CEO of Graphcore. He highlighted the endorsement of his team and their transformative AI technologies. He emphasized the ongoing demand for AI compute and the need to improve efficiency, resilience, and computational power. Graphcore offers intelligence processing units designed for AI workloads and a software stack for developers. In 2020, its device outperformed an NVIDIA A100 GPU and half the time for a GPU-based drug discovery workload. However, Graphcore has struggled with revenue and profitability. They reported only $2.7 million in income in 2022 against expenditures of $206.8 million. Graphcore is already a significant employer in the UK's tech sector and has committed to creating high-skilled jobs. This acquisition is expected to provide Graphcore with resources and opportunities for expansion. It also speaks to the competitive AI chip market with players like NVIDIA, Intel, and AMD. As AI permeates various sectors, the demand for specialized AI hardware will grow. Integrating Graphcore into SoftBank's portfolio positions both companies to capitalize on this trend. The Pentagon's research arm, DARPA, is leading a new initiative to ensure its personnel adopt emerging AI technologies cautiously and responsibly. The focus is on understanding the ethical, legal, and societal implications of these technologies. DARPA has a long history of innovation in AI and machine learning. Recently, it's been pioneering the next generation of algorithms. DARPA's director is Stephanie Tompkins. Tompkins discussed the uncertainty of potential unintended consequences of generative AI and adversarial capabilities. She spoke about past projects like ARPANET as examples of how unpredictable new tech can be. ARPANET was the first system to connect computers, and people involved in the ARPANET project never imagined the rise of social media and its impacts. Now, DARPA is working to help staff prioritize applications and assess potential risks. Tompkins emphasized the importance of understanding complex systems and crafting informed policies. She noted that policymaking often lacks sufficient information, leading to extreme measures rather than nuanced solutions. This new effort aims to provide the necessary information for crafting subtle and informed policies, ensuring the responsible adoption of these disruptive AI technologies. So what happened? In today's episode, we covered the dramatic assassination attempt on former President Donald Trump which significantly boosted his chances in the upcoming election, at least according to the prediction markets. We discussed the SEC's dropping its investigation into hero systems, demonstrating the ongoing regulatory battles in the crypto space. We explored the anticipation around the approval of spot ETH ETFs and how it might impact the market. We also touched on Nigeria's push for clearer regulatory framework for cryptocurrencies, Germany's recent Bitcoin sales, and the EU's collaboration with Chromaway on blockchain sustainability solutions. Additionally, we looked at the UK's approach to regulating DAOs, OpenAI's development of its next-gen AI model, Strawberry, and Amazon's efforts to enhance AI accuracy. Finally, we got into SoftBank's acquisition of Graphcore and DARPA's new initiative on the ethical implications of AI technologies. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Disruptive Technologies Podcast. We'll see you next time.